Extraordinary satellite images captured the moment an underwater volcano erupted. Even in an active volcanic region, scientists estimate that this eruption was a one in a thousand year event, estimated to have a force greater than multiple atomic bombs. What you see also on the volcano is a satellite image with a massive eruption column, roughly about 17 kilometers high, give or take. Now, what happened in this particular case is that two very, um, let's say, unfortunate things came together that the previous eruptions um, erased part of the volcano, so it submerged underneath the ocean. And uh, the, the other part is that magma that came up from the deep earth interior, it had a fair bit of gas, we call it volatiles, dissolved in the magma. And the combination of the two of them caused this substantial eruption that we saw in the recent days. Following the eruption, tsunami waves crashed into the Tongan coastline. Warnings were issued for multiple countries, including the east coast of Australia, New Zealand, Japan, Hawaii, Alaska, and the US Pacific coast. It is not really a usual thing for a volcano to cause a tsunami. Though first, of course, um, you need to have a uh, volcano that is basically close to the ocean or uh, in the middle of the ocean. And uh, what you need to have is a displacement of water. So a tsunami is simply caused by pushing a lot of material into the water or replacing that material. Assessing the extent of the damage to Tonga has so far been difficult, with communications to the area largely down. The Fijian CEO of Save the Children, Shaan Ali, says they're most concerned about access to food and clean water. What we are hearing uh, from, uh, you know, satellite communications is that, you know, um, a lot of uh, people are in dire need of food and uh, clean water. We do know that, uh, you know, there are indications that the volcano can erupt again. Um, and if it does, then, um, you know, population and people who are living in Tonga, you know, their capacity and resilience to be able to cope with another, you know, eruption. We don't know if there are any deaths reported so far, and we hope that uh, there has been none. Australia has pledged support for the region, with the Royal Australian Air Force P-8A Poseidon departing Queensland today to conduct an assessment of damage to critical infrastructure and assess what further support is needed. Curtis Tui Halnia is the Deputy Head of Mission at the Tonga High Commission in Canberra. He joined me a short while ago. Curtis Tui Halnia, what's the overall sense you have of the impact of the eruption on Tonga? Uh, thank you, Laura. I, at the moment, we, it's a mixed feeling, uh, not only because of what is happening in Tonga on the photos and videos we get to see online, but it's also the information that has been uh, shared to us via the uh, uh, communication line through the Department of Foreign Affairs, which is the only uh, way for us to gain information and to access information to Tonga. And unfortunately, it's, uh, it doesn't look good. It's a very chaotic uh, situation in Tonga. Also here in Australia, where the Tongan communities are eager to find out what is happening to their family and also to uh, to know whether is there anything wrong or is there any death or anything that is uh, might affect their families back in Tonga. So what information do you have about what damage may have been caused and what injuries may be involved? Uh, as of now, we have the formal uh, information which has uh, been uh, informed us that only the coastal uh, line in front of the, of the capital in the main island that has been uh, uh, affected. But we also have informal information that other part of the of Tonga that uh, it's been damaged. And we even have uh, some information that there is uh, one death has been reported in Tonga as of we speak, but not yet been confirmed. Well, I understand that some communications have been re-established within Tonga. Is there any information yet from the outer islands? Uh, yes, we do receive some information from Habai Group and Wawa'u that they are not as badly affected as the capital. 
uh, this information is through uh, some uh, satellite communication of the University of the South Pacific uh, in Hawaii and also Wawao. Uh, so Hawaii is still affected, but uh, not as much as the, uh, the main island. Can you give us some idea of how much of a shadow the volcano has traditionally cast over Tonga? I mean, there was a big eruption in 2015. Uh, do, do people live with a sense of it uh, possibly erupting at any time? According to what we know from the diaspora here and the Tongan communities, yes. But uh, uh, back in few years, this is all new to the main island because we usually don't experience this except uh, a few years ago when the same island was erupted, but it did not really affect the people and also the main island, uh, rather than just some flights were canceled. But for this to really happen with the uh, tsunami and also with the uh, earthquake, uh, this really, really uh, affect lots of uh, people where they have to experience. Uh, I spoke to some people just as they were running up to a higher uh, location in Tonga, this is all new to them. It really happened. Before, it was just more like of a, a drill. It might happen. But this one was the actual uh, tsunami and the actual uh, earthquake. Well, I'm sure we all send our best thoughts to Tonga. And thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lee Sales. Thanks for watching this story. If you'd like to watch more of 730's stories, they are on the left of your screen. And tap on the button below to subscribe and get the latest from ABC News.